So anybody who has spent much time around service in a dealership understands that when a customer comes in and expresses a concern uh, with some aspect of their vehicle, there typically is an approach that is called the three C's of service. And the three C's of service relate to the concern the customer is expressing, the cause, and the correction. And typically, that is the approach that we take. It's the advisor's job to talk with the customer to understand what the concern is. And then it's the technician's job to diagnose and figure out what the cause is. And then it's the technician's job to correct it. But this outlines and, and shows us one of the areas that is a flaw of us in the car business. Because we think of things too often from our perspective. Because here's the challenge. Concern, cause, correction. If we truly corrected things, we would never have this concern or uh, trying to measure fix it right first time. We would have 100% fix it right first time and customers wouldn't complain. Not the way that they do now. But I am convinced that we're missing a very important point in the overall formula, if you will, or approach that we take to trying to resolve customer issues. And that is why we have so many disgruntled customers and why we don't have as high a retention as we could or should have. So I did a project with J.D. Power a number of years ago. And I went into dealerships and I evaluated what they were doing in regards to whether they were capturing the concern cause correction in their paperwork on the repair order. And then the more I went through this and, and realized that we stop short of truly dealing with issues from the customer's perspective. Let me explain. I believe there should be four C's. And if we, if we deal with the fourth C, we would solve a lot of the real issues that are there. The fourth C comes down to something I call confirmation. And the interesting thing in the JD Power project I was looking for things that the technician was doing after correcting the issue. I mean, certainly on the repair order, we want to know what did they do? What parts did they uh, apply to the car? What kinds of repairs did they perform relative to the concern that the customer expressed? But herein lies the challenge. The customer in their own ability is trying to express the concern. They're not a technician. They're not a, a repair expert on vehicles. All they know is something is bothering them. Something is wrong with the vehicle. It may be very well perceived. In a lot of cases, because we can't replicate the issues, maybe things are perceived. But therein lies the challenge. If we don't go back and confirm that we have fixed the thing that was being expressed as the concern in the first place, we can throw a lot of parts and repair effort at a car and not actually deal with what the customer was concerned with. Let me give you an example. Let's say the customer comes in and says, when I turn the corner, uh, my, the wheel is making a really loud noise. And it's the front right wheel. And so the advisor writes that down on the repair order and the technician uh, takes a look at the, the, the wheel and finds that the maybe a ball joint is loose or there's a bearing that needs to be replaced or maybe the brakes are, are uh, metal on metal. And so the technician says, here's what I found and goes ahead and, and fixes it. And yet, when the, if they don't test drive the car, and amazingly, how many times when I did that project with JD Power, that it wasn't indicated on the repair order that there were any miles driven 
to to confirm that the noise because all the customer knows is that there was a noise and if we don't later go and confirm that the noise is gone then how do we know that we actually fixed the concern we may have found additional items that needed to be fixed and that's fair enough but maybe the customer wasn't concerned about those things or because they weren't aware, we went ahead and did things or told them that there were th certain things that needed to be done and they didn't have the information that they needed to interpret whether what we we're doing is valid. And so the worst thing that we can do is fix valid things that the customer doesn't understand and not fix the things they, that they came in and were concerned about. Because what that means is that they distrust us. In so many cases, they think we're just trying to make extra money and fix things that don't need to be fixed or fix things that need to be that we're doing in advance of when they're necessary. So if the technician had test driven the vehicle, they would find that either the noise was gone or it wasn't. And so afterwards, if the technician simply writes down on the repair order, this is what I found, this is what I repaired, and I test drove the vehicle and the noise is gone. Maybe it would go a long way to giving customer confidence. And I would even go that all of this, the whole point of all of this is to give the customer confidence. Because if we can give the customer confidence, they will trust us and they will become more loyal. Now, one extra tip for technicians, and this applies to other parts of the dealership too. But don't say you test drove the vehicle and not take care of the simple little odometer reading notation on the repair order. Nothing is worse than saying I test drove the vehicle but the odometer reading is the same in and out as it, as it was when the customer came in, it would show zero mile difference. When that's the case, how do you back up your story and how does a customer really trust us when we say we did something, but we didn't follow through the, with the process and take care of the details? So be mindful of those kinds of things. Practice the four C's of service Make sure that you confirm that you dealt with the concern that the customer expressed so that you can give them confidence and they will come back to you and maybe even tell some others about how good you treated them and how well you take care of their cars and that will help to boost advocacy and loyalty.